Hello, everybody, and welcome to Find My Past Live. We're really excited to be hosting these sessions for you, and we hope that you've been enjoying them as we've all gone through kind of a very tumultuous last couple of months. My name is Jen Baldwin. I'm the Data Acquisition Manager for North America for Find My Past, and I want to share with you today uh, a newly released record collection that we've just put online in celebration of the 75th anniversary of VE Day, and also something that I have been able to work on uh, really in quite in a lot of detail. One, a collection that I'm actually really excited about, and it happens to feature the Canadian military. So let's jump into the Find My Past photo collection. I'm going to stop, start, by not stop, I'm going to start by sharing my screen with you so that we can actually walk through this together. So, um, we're starting on the Find My Past dashboard. If you have an account with Find My Past, you've probably seen this many times, right? When you log in, this is what you get to see. And I'm going to just walk you through the process of accessing these materials. So, I'm going to start by going first to the search drop down menu, and I'm going to go to the A to Z of record sets. This is for better or worse, kind of, you know, essentially what we think of as our um, card catalog on Find My Past. And I'm going to do a really basic search because this collection is named in a way that no other collection is. It's actually called the Find My Past Photo Collection. So if I just type in the word Find My Past, it immediately comes up. It's the only option. So we click on the photo collection itself. Now, the materials from this collection come from two different sources. The vast majority of images are brought to us from a partnership with MirrorPix or Reach PLC, which runs numerous newspapers across England and Scotland. But some of these materials also come from Library Archives Canada. There's approximately 2,500 images from the Canadian military. We've been able to utilize the information on these images and the very powerful metadata to make the search on these on this collection really, really good. So let's start with just some basic searches and I'll show you some of the ways in which we can really take advantage of the collection and the search structure that's been built. So if you're specifically interested in Canadian military photos, you might think the most obvious thing is to actually just to search by country and you can't. You can just type in Canada and you get, you get it in the list, right? You immediately get 520 results. You can also, and this is kind of one of my biggest suggestions, is click on this browse country link. What that does is actually pulls up a list of all of the information as it was provided to us, right? Just like with historical records, we don't change the way this, uh, a record was labeled. Um, when we create, you know, when we publish the records. So you see things like Arctic, right? That's the way the photograph was identified in the original source. So if we're looking for images from Canada, images that were taken in Canada, we can select Canada from the list. If we're thinking about something else, like, for example, there's Germany and Germany vicinity, right? Maybe they're not quite sure where the image was taken from. Um, or another example, and I'm going to scroll down a little bit through a couple clicks. Um, there is an option for Netherlands, but if you scroll down, there's actually another option for the Netherlands, right? So if you wanted to do a particular location or country, make sure that you use this filter so that you can actually see exactly how the images were labeled in the original source, okay? I'm just gonna cancel this because I've already selected Canada by typing it in, and let's just go to our search results and see what happens. We have 520 results um, that were shared or, or categorized as being taken in Canada, and you can see the options here. There's a variety of materials. We have um, almost all of them are gonna be from the armed forces or the war category. Um, we have a year selected in the vast majority of them, and then many of them have kind of this list of words attached to them. Some of them have a specific headline, but some of them just have this list of words. And we're going to refer to these as keywords. That's really what they are. So this one is civilians, rail, couple, right? Um, we have another one that's weapon, military action, shore. And I started this by talking about how powerful the metadata is on this collection, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. When we search by keyword in this collection, we're gonna find a huge variety of options for us. So just about anything you can think of in terms of war life, right? Whether it was military action or the civilian world or companies that were building things to support the war effort, all of those things are included in that keyword metadata. So that's the power of this particular search. 
when we go into these photographs, we get all sorts of things. Let's take a look. Let's go down here at the bottom. There's one that's keyworded letter, military life, destroyer, cigarette, photos, and family. That's quite a lot, right? We're going to take a look first at the transcription or the index for the image and just see what it says. So this is a 1940 photograph taken in Halifax, Canada from the Royal Canadian Navy. And look at the description. Leading stoker Henry Leclerc, second from left, and other identified naval ratings writing letters aboard the destroyer uh, in Halifax in November 1940. We can see, again, all of those keywords listed out for us. We can even see, in this case, it's unknown, but the photographer, right? So think about the power of searching for a photographer. Now, my dad happened to be um, a photographer for the United States Navy, um, not during World War II, obviously, later in life during Vietnam. I would love to be able to find a way to search, you know, U.S. Navy um, photographs by photographer because that would just, I mean, just to see all of his work. Now, for me as a descendant of a Navy photographer, that's really meaningful. But for the rest of the rest of us, right, who maybe aren't related to a photographer, um, using the photographer search can be really interesting. And we'll show you, um, I'll show you one of my ideas about that in just a minute, actually. So let's take a look at the image, right? This sounds like an intriguing photograph. Let's take a look at what it actually is. When we click on view image, um, oh, this is a good one. I do remember this one. So you have a row of sailors. La look at them. They're smiling. They're talking. They've got a couple of cigarettes happening. He's got his arm around the other one. They're sharing pictures. It actually, to me, kind of looks posed, I'll be honest. Um, but Imagine you're a descendant of this gentleman right here. He's writing a letter. He's got some personal items around him. You can see, if you zoom in carefully and you kind of magnify this picture a bit, I bet that you could actually see what's in his box, right? What are, this looks like maybe a map, it's photographs of people. What does he have? What was his personal effects? What were the things that were important to him? And then, of course, you have all the additional details in the background, right? All these kinds of these look like ports, you know, windows or whatever. Um, I'm not very good at Navy, ling Navy lingo, so forgive me for that. But, you know, you've got all of these things going on around the kind of the focus of the picture. And that's fascinating, right? I love that. So that's just one example. Oh, look, we can zoom in. Look, let's zoom in on him. I didn't, I didn't actually think you could do that. So that's fun um, when you're recording. So you've got all this detail that you could possibly pursue, right? Really, really interesting stuff. Okay, so that's what happens when you search by country, right? But again, we have all of these options for keywords that we can search by, and, you're, um, and that is really exciting, right? All of those opportunities. Let's go back into the collection, find my past photo collection. And this time, instead of searching for a location, I'm gonna search for um, a, a keyword, right? So I'm gonna use the keyword Regina. You can see that I've, I've done this before. I'm gonna look for a specific unit um, and that's what I'm interested in. But I'm just gonna search for Regina and see what happens. I get 36 results and all of them in some way were searched and, and have something to do with probably um, a regiment, right? That's what I'm hoping for. So I'm gonna select this one down here. It's um, tagged with D-Day vehicle and D-Day originals. I'm gonna to go to the photograph first this time. Um, and we have this wonderful image of these three individuals standing around a Jeep, it looks like. Um, it looks like they're, the walls are kind of crumbled and bombarded possibly. We've got some cobblestone streets and we have these three individuals that are standing around talking. Again, the detail in these images is just incredible, right? We've got a wedding ring right here. The maple leaf on the, on the Jeep itself, it looks like maybe some kind of a, a label or sign um, identifying the Jeep, I'm not sure. I don't know enough about World War II history, I'll be honest. It's, it's not, my, not my major topic. Um, <laughs> I usually go earlier than this. Um, but the details in these photographs is just outstanding, right? Let's take a look at the transcription for this image because we get even more information. And I want to make sure that you really take a look at both because it's really important. So we now know that this, this photograph was taken in Belgium. It is, in fact, the Regina Rifle Regiment. And the description is what really captures me. It says that left to right, right, these riflemen both wounded. And then Jay Zimmer, another rifleman, was wounded on a canal. Three D-Day originals of the Regina Rifle Regiment who landed in France on 6 June 1944. Now, they're pictured several months after the fact, right, several months after D-Day, but D-Day originals just really, you know, obviously implies that they were part of the Regina Rifle Regiment on D-Day, right? So they um, would have been there. They would have been on the beaches. 
that's a really powerful moment to capture in time. And here they are a few months later, they've survived. They're now in Belgium. You know, they're, they're at least for the moment of this photograph uh, appear to be healthy and happy. And, and that's, you know, that's an incredible amount of information. Now I mentioned earlier, looking at the name of the photographer. So here's what I found out actually. I did a search on this Donald Grant, the photographer who actually took this image. And what I found was that he actually appeared to have stayed with the Regina Rifle Regiment for more than a day. He took a series of photographs over a short period of time. And again, they're all date, you know, mostly dated like this with, with quite details in the date. So you can see where that photographer went and did. So if you find a photograph from, let's say, the 10th of November, 1944, and it um, is in Belgium and it has his name on it as a photographer, you can narrow down which units were in that place in time, right? So if the people in the photograph aren't identified, maybe you can start to narrow down who those people might actually have been, right? Um, and based on where the photographer was and when the photographer was in that location. Um, so it's possible that maybe he followed the Regina Rifle Regiment for, you know, a week or two. You know, I, I don't know for sure, but it would be a very interesting angle of research to pursue. Okay, so let's um, go back again to the um, search screen. And it keeps going back to one of my other searches. I'm sorry about that, but that's the, you know, that's the risk with live demos, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so there it is. Um, that's why many people use, you know, PowerPoint. Okay, so, but let's do another search and see what we can find. One of the other ways I wanted to show you that we can search, especially in the Canadian photographs, is actually by name decent percentage of the Canadian photographs um, in this collection are actually labeled with names. We've already, we've already seen that to a certain extent. Um, so I'm going to search for the surname of Ewing. I get two results. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I choose this example, because it's very easy to see. Now, one of them is from 1944 in Belgium. That's probably the one I want to look at, right? The other one is from 1969, clearly part of the REACH collection. Um, and again, that's a growing collection. So you're going to see a variety of categories of types of photographs. Um, but I'm definitely interested in this one from Belgium. I can tell from the keywords that are listed that it's going to be a very powerful and probably an emotional photograph, right? It's a funeral. There's a salute. There's a grave. So let's take a look at first the information um, before we show you that photograph. So we see it's 26 October 1944 in Belgium. It's Major William Ewing saluting at the funeral of 55 members of A Company of the Black Watch. Okay, yeah, that's going to be uh, an, um, you know, a, a tearjerker kind of heartbreaking moment for sure. So now that you've all been warned, I'm going to click on the button to view the image. Um, <laughs> some of these photographs do get kind of graphic. And there we have it, right? Um, so Sergeant Ewing saluting over the graves. The photograph is taken from the angle of behind these crosses. Um, that's certainly a powerful image. Uh, I would stop and hesitate to think, um, you know, look at the faces of these children here alongside him. Um, and this woman here really stands out to me in, in the apron or the dress um, with the flowers on it. Just a Wow, that's, that's, that's a photograph, right? Um, you stop and think about all the different facets of this terrible conflict that you know, encompass the entire globe. Um, that's, that's a moment in time that is really, really special. So for members of that particular unit, for descendants, for people who are researching that part of the Canadian Army, this is going to be a really, really impactful photograph, right? Even, you know, it is for everybody, I think, but um, certainly tells quite a story in this image. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Now, there are a series of keywords that are used kind of over and over and over again. They're probably, you know, the most common keywords in the collection. And again, you can search by all sorts of things. If you can think of it, you know, it's probably in the collection. But there are a couple that really stand out. Two of those are military life and military action. And the difference between the two is military action is essentially any kind of actual movement of the army, right? It's a battle. It's them um, moving from one lo location to another. It's a sniper photograph. It's, you know, protecting a hill or a wall. Um, it, anything like that, anything that's actually like active duty. Military life is more like cooking around a campfire, right? As you're, you know, uh, taking a break from the battle or something. or um, 
you know, uh, settling in camp and all the different signs that they had around um, their tents and, you know, where they were actually stationed. Um, it's things like writing letters or listening to music or that kind of thing. There's another large category around entertainment. So it's all the, you know, the USO force. Well, they weren't USO because it's Canada, but um, USO like units um, that went in to entertain the troops, right? So those kinds of things. So think about kind of those bigger categories and search on those just to see what, what happens. So I am going to search on military action. There's 123 results. Um, and that's, again, specific to this Canadian photograph set. Um, but before we click on any of these, take a look at all these different keywords. Now, this is what I've been talking about the whole time, right? Down here, we've got map, binoculars, helmet, military action. Uh, we have tank. Um, Military actions on this one twice. I don't know why. We'll have to fix that. There's one that says night action. Um, there's one that says bullet hole, right? So all of those are things that you can search on. You know, submarine, right? Um, depth charges. You want to make sure that you read through, when you do a search, read through that list on all the results that come back so that you get a sense of what you can search for, right? To just broaden what you're looking at. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm going to pick one of these and we'll see what happens. Um, let's do the one with the bullet hole and the ship and the portrait and see what that's about. I haven't looked at this one. Oh, wow. Look at his face. <laughs> that's such a great picture. And look at that. So he's definitely on a ship. He's, you know, member of the Navy. Um, he's showing off his bullet hole. He's got this whistle dangling down. I look at that face. Wow, that's a look. Um, <laughs> you know, I picture these guys, you know, uh, growing up and coming home and marrying and having kids and then their, you know, their grandchildren finding this photograph and going, wow, grandpa was something serious, right? <laughs> like, that's really cool. That's a, that's a cool picture. Um, so there's, there's our bullet hole picture, right? So this is kind of a, you know, military action. He saw some action. He's definitely been involved in something serious. Um, and so he show, he's showing off the effects of that. Um, and again, it took me back. To, <laughs> we're going to have to take a look at that, I guess. All right. So let's go back into our photographs here one more time and see what else we can discover. There is the opportunity. Now, let's say, for example, that you already know what unit your ancestor was in. Maybe you've studied that unit and their activities. There is the option to search for specific operations or campaigns. So, for example, you could search for D-Day. Um, you can also search for various operations because, again, the information was in the metadata on the photograph when it was um, uh, made available to us uh, at Find My Pass. So, um, if we search for the word operation, for example, right, that's a lot, 483 results um, for, you know, these 2,500 photographs, and we get a whole lot of, of variety here, right? The first thing that hits me is there's one that says operating room. That's not exactly what we're looking for, right? We're looking maybe for an actual, you know, um, military uh, endeavor, like an organized operation. So let's edit our search and try this one again. I'm going to instead search for one of the operations that I know um, was part of the Canadian campaigns, right? So Operation Jubilee. I then limit it. I get 25 results. It's much more manageable, much easier for me to look through. And I get exactly that, Operation Jubilee, all the way down the list. So this is um, a training exercise, we think, and, um, you know, definitely something that we want to look at. If your ancestor or his unit um, was involved in Operation Jubilee, you certainly want to to take a look at these. Now, there's also Jubilee Tea Party <laughs> um, and, a you know, a church jubilee. It of course, it's going to pop up, um, you know, come from kind of that social type of jubilee. But in this case, um, we really definitely are looking for Operation Jubilee. Um, so let's take a look at this one. Now, I've looked at it before, so I'm cheating a little bit. But there's a particular reason I want to share this one with you. Um, there's a lot going on in this photograph, right? You have people with, you know, that are covered in dirt. You've got guys back here that look like, you know, they're coming in on some kind of a, a passenger boat or, you know, transport boat but look at this guy right up front he's lost half of his pants um so <laughs> and i that's the way i i say that to myself in my brain whenever i see this picture he's lost half of his pants what kind of story does he have about operation jubilee that's got to be an incredible thing to hear um, I would really, I would really love to know his story. So if anybody happens to know who this guy is um, and how he lost his pants or half of his pants, <laughs> um, please reach out to find my pass and let me know. We'd be very anxious to learn about his particular day. Uh, 
Um, it's, it's just such a great picture. So there are a variety of other ways to search this collection, of course, right? You can do a lot here. You can be really, really creative. Um, and that includes searching multiple keywords at one time. Um, so let's take a look um, at that process, right? So I happen to know that there were a lot of photographs taken of people in various uniforms. Some of them were posed, so like showing off the uniform they used in the Alps for the ski units versus the uniforms they used in, you know, Australia or Africa where the heat was the problem. Um, so there's a lot of uniform pictures in here, but there's also portrait style photographs that really look like, you know, someone standing still taking a picture. So let's search for the, both the keywords uniform and portrait together. Of course, we have, you know, a limited number of, of results. That's a good thing as far as I'm concerned. I'd much rather work through five results than work through 500. Um, and we have a variety of things that we can look at, right? So this one um, I have looked at before and I've always been kind of intrigued by it because it, the, the information on the photograph gives us so much to learn, right? It's, it's named, this individual is named. He's in the Calgary Highlanders, he's a scout. He wears his sniper's uniform, which includes camouflage denison smock, which I'll be honest, again, World War II is not my area of expertise, but um, I'd never heard of this before. And so if it, was dis if it was important enough to include in the description of the photograph, I went in and did a little bit more digging and to just to learn you know, what, what was the big deal about denison smock. So that was interesting reading. Um, he carries field glasses, a telescope rifle, a pistol, and hand grenades. Um, and this, this photograph is taken out of Belgium um, by Ken Bell with the National, Def you know, can, excuse me, Canada Department of National Defense. So, in, you know, sounds like a very interesting photograph, right? Um, and, and it has intrigued me. So here he is um, in his uniform with his Denison's, um, Denison's head, head scarf, um, his binoculars, his his rifle, his pistol, his hand grenade uh, as a scout in his sniper uniform, right? So that really, you know, there's not much else to this photograph. It is a picture of him, right? You can see some trees and, and bushes in the background, but this is a photograph that's worth studying um, if you're interested in, you know, Canadian Army snipers, if you're interested in scouts, if you're interested in the various types of, um, um, of tools that they use or the different types of uniforms. So and you can see a little bit of his, you know, his wool uniform poking out here at its collar and so forth. So if you're interested in military history, this is absolutely an asset, right, for, for historians and researchers really on kind of all levels. So that's just a handful of examples of how powerful this collection can be. Now, I mentioned that there are um, some images that are kind of graphic, and I'll just repeat that. Um, there are images that include people who are killed in action or who are wounded, and those are labeled and they are available in the collection. But just to kind of forewarn you a little bit that some of these images do get um, a little bit difficult to, to look at sometimes. Um, and just, you know, so people aren't caught unawares. There's one more search that I want to do, and it kind of um, goes back to that, that aspect of what, what the rest of the world was experiencing um, during the war. So there's a lot of war brides included in the collection um, and services for war brides, but there's also things like um, different companies that helped with the war effort. So we're going to search for the Canadian um, powerboat company, and I'm just going to do Canadian power, actually, because that's sufficient in this case. If I just search for Canadian, again, I'm going to get a bunch of photographs taken in Canada. But in this case, I'm specifically getting photographs of the Canadian powerboat company as I'm, you know, manufacturing um, boats on behalf of the Canadian Navy. So there's a few options for me to look at. Um, this one actually looks like it has some women in it as well. So let's go ahead and click on that one um, just to see what happens. And again, this is going to be the manufacturing plant um, from the Canadian powerboat company. Um, I'm looking for the women. <laughs> They're in here somewhere. Um, and look, we've got what appears to be a couple of businessmen and then, you know, several people laboring and working to build this boat, put this vessel together so it's ready to go. Um, an aspect of military life um, and civilian life, really, that we may not always hear about as much. You know, when you're doing military research, it's very common to just focus on the branches of the military themselves, but there's a lot happening at home. Now you can see a lot of options on this screen. There's, you know, the transcription option. You can add this to your tree on Find My Past. If I move 
this little view box here. You can see down here at the bottom, there's a print and a download option. Um, and you can scroll back and forth. We've got the copyright statement, Library and Archives Canada is on every image so you know exactly where it came from. Um, if you use the previous next options, right, these little buttons off to the side that go back and forth between the collection. Here's another one from the Canadian Powerboat Company. Um, this one is in portrait, so it's a little bit harder to see the whole thing at one time. There we go. Um, so two men working on a vessel, right, with hand tools, a hammer and a handsaw. I see, I know what those are. <laughs> Not too bad. Um, <laughs> so you can move back and forth. Just keep in mind that um, you might get a variety of pictures, right, when you scroll back and forth. But certainly take the time to just kind of explore these pictures. Um, uh, look at this sign, right? An interest of safety it is forbidden to take bottles, cups, etc., on board ship. Um, so again, just gives you kind of a different perspective, a different angle, a different avenue for research, perhaps. Um, just a really, really interesting record set. Okay, so I think I've covered most of what I wanted to talk about, and thankfully the live demo went well. Um, let me give you one more example, actually, before I let you, before I end this. I do want to show you a little bit more of just kind of civilian life because there's a whole lot of civilian photographs in the collection, um, and those come from Canada, but they also come, you know, like yeah, family members and such. But they certainly also come from countries that were. Um, assisted by the Canadian Army, right? So Italy or the Netherlands or th something like that. So let's go back and search for civilian. And this time I'm going to limit it to a country or maybe a subject. I think I'll pick subject this time just because I haven't done it before. Um, let's do World War. Let's do Armed Forces in War. We'll apply the filters. We get, we're still at 200 results, so that's, that's too many for me. Um, we'll go back to a, a country and see if we can filter by country. Let's go for France. And let's just see what happens. So we get down to 39 results. That's much more manageable as far as I'm concerned. Um, <laughs> so let's see. We've got an American troop jokes with civilian, 1944. We've got a motorcycle, universal carrier, uh, women, bicycles, a donkey. Oh, okay. Well, you know which one I'm clicking on. Let's see what this is about. 1944 France with a donkey. It's the 11th Field Company of the Royal Canadian Engineers, Unidentified Personnel, um, talking to a French boy with a donkey in France. That's fantastic, right? This is the part of kind of military life that you don't necessarily get to see all the time. What a great photo, right? Look at this guy up front. Um, and you can see the buildings in the background. There's actually two individuals um, from this Canadian unit included. That's a lot of fun. That's a great photograph. I also know that there's images of like unit mascots, dogs. We found cats. Um, uh, certainly there's images of horses, um, all sorts of different opportunities for research in this collection. So again, I think that about covers what I wanted to share with you. I hope that um, everybody is able to take a few minutes and explore this record set. It's really, really a great collection. Um, and it's, um, it's not great just because the images are, you know, are neat to look at. It's really great because of the way it's built and the opportunity for research, right? It's neat because the metadata is so detailed and you get so much information from each photograph. Um, even if the individual in the photograph remains unidentified, right? Maybe as a community, the Find My Past community could go in and identify those people. Wouldn't that be fabulous? Um, but there's just so much metadata there to use. There's so much to research off of. There's so much social history and context available um, in this collection. And that's one of the reasons that it's so fantastic and so great. So I hope you get the chance to explore the faces of the Second World War from Canada as part of the Find My Past photo collection. Uh, we hope that you enjoy the research and we hope that um, the collection is useful to you. We're really excited about it at Find My Past. We're excited to be publishing some photographs from a time period that, um, you know, it hasn't been well represented and, and most of the collection has never been digitized and put online before. So that's really exciting as well. If you have questions, drop them in the comments. Um, we'd love to talk to you. Um, certainly share your expertise, your stories. You know, if you can identify who that guy is with half of his pants missing, we'd love to know that. Um, absolutely share with us your research, your stories. And in the meantime, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, um, and enjoy your research. And, um, and we hope that you have a really, really excellent day. So thanks for being with us on Find My Past Live. Join us next time. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have a great session where I'm actually going to walk you through some of my research. 
that I've been working on in my family and see if we can't crowdsource some solutions together. Thanks so much for watching. Join us on Find My Past Facebook all the time, every day. Um, we'd love to hear from you and, um, and we'll talk to you soon.